Rice Chex and Wheat Chex, the bite-sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages, present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy have discovered a strange castle in the valley on the planet Mars. Curiously, they make their way down a long corridor. This place has the weirdest lighting, sir. Yes, it seems to come from the walls and ceiling as if the surface were glowing. I wonder where this corridor leads. It seems to go on forever. A trick of perspective, Happy. Hey, what happened? I, I can't walk. Happy, look at the floor. It's getting transparent. Smoke and rockets. It's disappearing right from under us. Hey. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting Space Patrol adventure, The Revenge of Dr. Yeager. Breakfast time, Space Patrollers, the happiest time of the morning for all of you when you fill up your breakfast bowl like this with rice checks. Yes, Rice Chex, the triple treat cereal. Tops three ways. Tops for taste, tops for size, tops for get up and go. Toasted three times until it's cookie, crisp, and crunchy. Mmm, mmm. Every spoonful tastes like more. You bet Rice Chex is tops for taste, tops for size, has that modern bite-sized design. Size just right for a perfect bite. And it's hollow inside. It fills up with milk or cream. Glides from your bowl right onto your spoon. That's easy, breezy eating. And gang, Rice Chex is tops for get up and go. And wow, after a good nourishing breakfast with Rice Chex, you're ready to swing into action in school or play. So space patrollers, swing into action right away. Fill up your bowl every morning like Commander Corey and Cadet Happy with Rice Chex. Or for a neat whole wheat treat, try Wheat Chex. Mmm, mmm. Rice Chex, Wheat Chex. Tops for taste, tops for size, tops for get up and go. So get them today in the red and white checkerboard packages with a big full color picture of Commander Corey or Cadet Happy on the outside and the terrific Space Patrol trading card on the inside. Rice Chex, Wheat Chex. <laughs> And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Revenge of Dr. Yeager. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are in the Commander's space battle cruiser, the Terra 5, returning to the man-made planet Terra after a mission to Jupiter. Several thousand DUs inside the Mars orbit, Happy picks up a spaceship in the forward view scope. It's a small private cruiser, Commander. There's no sign of a rocket blast. It must be in free fall. What's its vector, Hap? I haven't reckoned it yet, sir, but well, at the rate we're gaining on it, its velocity is very low. And it doesn't seem to be in any planetary vector. Better call them. Yes, sir. It looks like a drifter to me, all right, sir. Emergency. Private cruiser M89 calling Space Patrol Battle Cruiser Terra 5. Hey, they're calling us. A faint signal for such a short distance. I'll boost the gain, sir. Private cruiser M89 calling Terra 5. I'm in trouble. Vendicoria aboard Terra 5 to cruiser M89. What's your trouble? I'm not sure. Power failure, I think. We'll join airlocks with their ship and come aboard. Corey out. Happy standby to operate magnetic coupler. Standing by, sir. You'll both go aboard. Bring the emergency oxygen bottle just in case. Oh, thank heavens you're here. Are you all right, miss? Oh, yes, I am now. The cabin air pressure seems okay, sir. Oh, yes, everything's fine. Just a minute. Didn't you space a phone in an emergency? You said something about power failure. I'm sorry, but I didn't know what else to do. You see, I was frightened. Are you alone this ship? Well, yes, Commander. You see, Happy, I... Happy, check that control panel. Yes, sir. What's your name, miss? Lorna Stark. Is this your ship? Yes, I'm from Lowell City, Mars. You can check that. I certainly will. The instruments check, sir. The rocket controls are off, that's all. Yes, that's right. I've been in a free fall for about a half an hour. Why? Well, I was afraid someone was after me. I thought if they didn't see the rocket exhaust, I'd have a better chance. Oh, I was just praying for a space patrol ship to come along. You have no idea how relieved I am. You'd better have a good reason for faking a distress call. Who's after you and why? Well, I'm afraid it's going to sound very strange. That's why I wanted you to come aboard so we could talk privately. I was afraid to explain over the space phone. I'm listening, Miss Stark. Well, perhaps I'd better start at the beginning. Did you ever hear of, of a Dr. Yeager? Yeager? 
Wilhelm Jaeger, the scientist and inventor. Dr. Jaeger's been dead for nearly 30 years. Yes, I know. He and my father were friends. You probably heard that several of Dr. Jaeger's inventions were never made public, that they're hidden in a secret castle. Dr. Jaeger was quite a colorful personality from what I've read. A lot of fantastic legends have sprung up about him, but how does all this tie in with your fake emergency call? Commander, that castle of Dr. Jaeger's is not legend. Jaeger? Jaeger. Sure. Uh, the fellow the old-time pilots talk about. Uh, the man who's supposed to have made all those uh, frightful inventions. Uh, weapons so terrible he never even wrote down his secrets. He did write them down, Cadet. I've seen some of the designs. Huh? Designs for what, Miss Stark? I, I don't recall them all now, but there was the Lethe Ray. Uh, just a minute. You mean the Lethe Ray actually existed? It exists now. Where? Who has it? Well, nobody. It's still where Dr. Yeager hid it. You don't know where it is? No, but somebody thinks I do. That's why they're after me. Well, who has reason to suspect that you know about Jaeger's secrets? A man named Carl Bracker. He once worked for my father. He was present when I opened the sealed package containing documents that Dr. Jaeger gave my father. You see, Dr. Jaeger left it up to my father's judgment whether certain inventions were to be revealed. One day, about three years ago, I came across that sealed package. Curiosity got the better of me, and I opened it. Go on. A moment later, my father and this Carl Bracker walked in. My father was furious with me. Right then and there, he destroyed the documents. He said Dr. Yeager was right, that people couldn't be trusted. I was ashamed and frightened. Neither father nor I mentioned the matter again. Then after father passed away, Bracker showed up. And wanted you to tell him where Yeager's secrets are hidden? Yes, but I told him I didn't know. He was angry. He said I'd be sorry, but he went away. And a few days ago, this other man started following me. I just know Bracker sent him. When you saw those documents, did you notice where Jaeger's inventions were hidden? Yes, but I've forgotten. I, I pushed it out of my mind. I didn't want to know. Ms. Stark, I want to give you a brainograph test. You don't believe me. Well, that's not the point. If that information about Jaeger is in your subconscious, someday you might recall it or be forced to reveal it. I want to find those inventions, if they exist, to keep them from falling into the wrong hands. And the brainograph will make me remember? It'll put your thought images on a screen. Even those dim patterns and impressions your conscious mind isn't aware of, it's completely painless. Are you willing? Well, of course. Well, it'll be late when we get to Terra. I'll arrange for a room for you at the Terra Space Hotel with a guard at the door. Guard? You said someone was after you, remember? Let's get into my ship. You can tell me more about this Carl Bracker. Early the next morning, Buzz and Appy arrange with Major Robertson, Space Patrol Security Chief, to set up a brainograph test. Then they hurry to the Terra Space Hotel to get Lorna Stark. They step out of the elevator and walk down the hall. Room 2309, wasn't it, sir? Yes. Say, where's the guard? He was to stay on duty in the hall until relieved. Hmm. The door's unlocked, sir. Something's wrong here. Miss Stark! <laughs> Hey, Commander, look. It's the guard. He's on the floor, tied up and gagged. Uh, just a minute, Sergeant. Happy untie him. I'll loosen the gag. There. Uh, where's Miss Stark? They took her away. I tried to stop them, but they slugged me. They? Yeah, there's two men, a, a big one and a little fellow in a waiter's outfit. That's how he got close to me out in the hall. The little guy with the tray, he pulled a ray gun on me and forced me into the room. And the big guy came in. Guess he'd been waiting around the turn in the hall. Here's a waiter's coat and tray on the floor, sir. How long ago did this happen? Uh, about two hours ago. It really tied me up. I've been trying to now, get... What about Miss me... Stark? Did she know the men? Did she go willingly? Well, she put up a squawk till the big guy got rough. But she seemed to know him, called him by name. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, Bracker. That's it, Bracker. Hat, get on the phone to headquarters. Have them check the files on Carl Bracker. I want all the data on my desk when we get there. This is all we have on Bracker, sir. Is there a photo? Yes, sir. Sergeant, is this one of the men... That's him, all right, sir. What's his record, Hap? Well, uh, picked up two years ago in a space safety code violation, Section 23D, installing instruments in a spaceship without a license. Fined 50 credits. Any address? Uh, let's see. Uh, just the place he works, Cosmocraft Instrument Company, 18 Newton Place, Terra. Cosmocraft. Mm -hmm. Spelled with two Ks, real cute. Uh, Merton Yost, chief engineer and consultant. I've heard of that outfit. They rebuild instruments and deal in second-hand electronics equipment for spaceships. Personally, I wouldn't trust him to repair a sundial. I wonder if Bracker still works there. Now, come on. We'll drop around and see if he's renewed his license. 
From the outside, Cosmocraft Instrument Company appears to be like the other small independent manufacturing concerns that thrive in the clean, handsome buildings on Newton Street. But a visitor would find the interior rather uninviting. The office is littered with papers and out-of-date technical books. A small, nervous man sits at a desk, glancing first at the street door, then toward the back room that serves as a workshop. In the shop, Lorna Stark sits, huddled on a packing case, while a large man towers threateningly over her. I'm tired of playing games, Lorna. Now let's have it. Where's Jager's castle? I don't know. I tell you, I don't know. Don't give me that! It's all those papers. The lethal ray and all those other secret weapons are at the castle, aren't they? Oh, I've forgotten, I tell you. Believe me, Bracker, I've forgotten. Hey, hey, cut out that noise. I can hear you clear out in the office. Uh, she's playing coy, Yost. But I'll get it out of her. We shouldn't have brought her here. All right, get back out there and shut the door. Suppose somebody comes in. All right, Bracker, but please keep quiet. All right, Lorna. Now, you'd better talk. Where's Jaeger's castle? I don't know. I don't know. This is it, Hap. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, gentlemen? I'm Commander Corey. Yes, Commander Corey, what can I do for you? Does Carl Bracker still work here? Bracker? Hey, um... Bracker, let's see. Um, I shouldn't think in a place of this size you'd have much trouble remembering who's in the payroll. Oh, uh, Mr. Bracker left us just last week. I don't know where he is. Is there anyone else I can talk to? No, I'm all alone here this morning. My assistant's out on a job at the spaceport. Sorry, I can't help you. Stop! All alone, huh? Come on, Hap. You can't go back there. Oh, we can't, huh? You heard what I said. Oh, you want to play rough. Good work, Hap. Stop it, you're hurting me. All right, Bracker, let go of her and get your hands up. Oh, Commander Corey. Get him way up, Bracker. Search him, Hap. Yes, sir. Ah, oh, he had this under his jacket, sir. A blast gun. Commander. Commander, I remember now. Jaeger's castle is in Mars. It's in the Hartog Hill. We'll discuss it later, Miss Stark. All right, Bracker, just take it easy and come over here. Stay right where you are, gentlemen, and don't move. I said don't move. I can shoot the girl before either of you turn around. Oh, uh, Yost, I've been wondering what happened to you. Drop your weapons. It's his play, Hap. Sorry, sir. I thought I clobbered him good. Now, that's being very smart, gentlemen. Uh, thanks, Yost. I'll just pick up my gun and add a few finishing touches. Oh, oh no, you don't. Uh, oh. Here, Lana. That takes care of your space patrol, friend. Yost, get the surface car ready while I bind and gag the girl. We're getting out of here. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. This is Dick Tufeld in Los Angeles with the story of one of the fastest planes in the world and a word from the man who test flies it, Joe Lynch. It's North American's Air Force F-86D Sabre Jet Interceptor. Speed well over 700 miles per hour. Wingspan is 37 feet, length 41. Cruising range, 500 miles. Now, by special tape recording made at International Airport, the well-known test pilot of the Sabre, Joe Lynch. The D is a one-man interceptor, so when you fly it, you're really on your own. That's why I see to it that I'm in good condition all the time. And one way to stay in good condition is by eating a good breakfast cereal, like rice checks or wheat checks. They're just packed full of energy, and they taste swell. I think you'll like them, too. No other cereal, puffed or flaked, contains so much nourishment in such concentrated bite-sized form. So take a tip from Joe Lynch, George Welch, and other top test pilots. Make your cereals rice checks and wheat checks. And now back to our Space Patrol adventure, The Revenge of Dr. Yeager. Buzz and Happy burst in upon Carl Bracker as he attempted to force Lorna Stark to reveal the hiding place of sinister weapons invented by the late Dr. Yeager. In the excitement of the rescue, Lorna blurted the location of Yeager's hidden castle, just as Bracker's partner, Merton Yost, intervened. Fearing resistance would endanger Lorna, Buzz and Happy surrendered their weapons. Bracker knocked the space patrollers unconscious, then he and Yost escaped, taking the girl with them. Now, an hour later, Buzz and Happy find themselves locked in the repair shop of the dingy spaceship instrument factory on Terra. Well, wait till I get a hold of that guy, Bracker. He raised a lump on my head the size of Mars' first moon. Hmm. Mars? Huh? That's where Jaeger's castle is. Did you hear Lorna just as we came in? I was sort of busy. If I did hear it, Bracker's gun knocked it out of my mind. Uh, whereabouts on Mars, did she say? Yes. It was right then that Yost came in, but I, I think I recall it. The Hartog Hills. Hartog Hills? 
That's a new one on me, and I thought I knew Martian geography. It's a range a few hundred miles northwest of Marquette City. And come to think of it, it's a good place to hide a castle. We're locked in. That isn't going to last more than a few seconds. We notify headquarters that we're blasting off from Mars. Well, gee, Commander, do you think Bracker will go there? Uh, doesn't he know that you heard Lorna tell where the castle was? He's gone pretty far already, Hap. He may figure that it's worth taking a chance and getting his hands on Jaeger's weapons. Those rumors are even half true. One man could wipe out an army with a lethal ray alone. Wow. Let's hope we find the castle before Bracker does. The door, Hap. Oh, yes, sir. Allow me. <laughs> Here, Hap, I'll help you out. And out of the spaceport. Hurry. Yes, sir. Merton Yost sits hunched over the controls of a private cruiser, watching the red-tinged disk of the planet Mars grow larger in the viewscope. He turns as Carl Bracker shoulders his way through the narrow opening into the control compartment. Can't you get any more acceleration out of this old bucket? Take it easy, Bracker. We'll be over the Hartog Hills right after sunup, the way I figured. Uh, you better contact Jacobs at Markov City. We'll meet him out in the desert. He can fly us to the Hartog Hills to look for the castle. Smart idea. When we locate Jaeger's hideout, there won't be a grounded ship there to give us away. Sometime later, another ship enters the thin, cold atmosphere of Mars. As Buzz handles the controls, Cadet Happy compares the terrain in the viewscope screen with the detailed 3D projecto chart of the sector of the surface of Mars. Hartog Hill's appearing in the screen now, sir. And so far, no sign of any ship that might be Bracker. I'll bet he didn't have the nerve. Well, let's not underestimate him, Hap. No, sir. Well, you sure were right when you said the Hartog Hills were a good place to hide a castle. Those rock formations are sure confusing. I'll cut our altitude, Hap, and place back and forth across the range. Now the viewscope scanning beam to a small arc. Yes, sir. Crisscrossing the range of hills, Buzz and Happy examine the terrain from every angle, peering down into steep-walled canyons, bouncing scanning beams off weirdly formed rocks and probing into vegetation. Then, for a fraction of a second, a formation appears in the viewscope that causes Buzz and Happy to exchange glances. Well, was it or wasn't it, sir? I'm going to circle back and make another pass over that canyon at a slightly different angle of approach. What we saw might have been a natural formation. I've been staring at different shapes of rocks for so long, I don't think I'd recognize a castle if it had a sign on it. We'll know in a minute, Hat. That's it, Happy. Yes, sir. I can make out columns and even steps. But wow, what a job of camouflage. Edgar built the entire facade of an enormous building right against the wall of a canyon. Magnificent. Yeah, if we'd flown over at another angle, well, we never would have seen it. There's no sign of another spaceship near here. Yeah, but there's plenty of room to land in front of the castle. Well, we'll land and have a close look at Jaeger's castle. A few moments later, Buzz and Happy stand before a beautiful facade of a building constructed against the wall of the cliff. Broad steps lead up to a gigantic door. Gee, Commander, now that we're right in front of it, I, I wonder why we didn't notice it from the ship. Every line of that building was cut to blend with the cliff when seen from a height. It's a beautiful job, Hap. Yeah. Look at the size of that door. We'll probably have to get something from the ship to blast it open. Let's go up and examine it first. Uh-oh. Commander, the door, it's swinging open. Somebody's in there. Have your ray gun ready, huh? Yes, sir. Well, there's no sign of anyone. The door may have opened automatically. I'll go in first, Hap. Smoke and rockets. Look at the size of this hall. Hey, Commander, the door is closing. We better get out while we can. Hurry. Hey, now the door is swinging open again. It is automatic. You don't have to worry. Let's explore the castle. Well, I'd sure like to find those weapons that Jaeger hid. Yeah, it may take time, judging by the size of this place. I wonder where all this light is coming from. There aren't any windows. The light seems to come from the walls and ceiling. As if the surface were glowing. Mm. Imagine building a place like this inside a hill where nobody can see it. Jaeger was a genius, all right, but well, I think he was a little nuts. Well, at least he was sane enough to try to keep dangerous weapons out of the hands of people he thought might misuse them. Yeah. I wonder where this corridor leads. Seems to go on forever. Uh, a trick of perspective, Happy. Hey. Hey. Hey, what happened? I, I can't walk. I have to look at the floor. It's getting transparent. Oh, smoke and rockets. It's disappearing. Right from under us. Commander, we're falling. Buzz 
Wallace and Happy plunge downward in total darkness. Any moment they expect to land with shattering suddenness on some hard surface. But seconds pass, and they keep plunging down into the blackness. Commander, I'm slowing down. Yes, so am I. Oh, we're at the bottom. Wherever that is. Stand right where you are, Happy. It isn't safe to move in this pitch blackness. When that floor opened up from under us, I never expected to move again. Lucky I brought my atomic light. That won't be necessary, uh, Commander. Who's that? You'll see when I turn on the lights. There. Bracker. Now, don't reach for your weapons. It'll be the last move you make. Raise your hands. Do as he says, Happy. Yours. Take the ray guns. All right, Bracker. Bracker, what have you done with Lorna Stark? She's perfectly safe in the next room. You're probably wondering just what happened to you. You're now in a lower level of Jaeger's castle. You were lowered by one of Jaeger's amazing inventions, a levitation beam controlled by this panel here. But the floor just dissolved under us. That part of the floor up there is actually the top cross-section of the levitation beam. By cutting the beam completely off, I could have dropped you to your death. Hmm. I suppose you want a medal. Yes. Open the door. I'm sure the commander would like to talk to Miss Stark. You're moving, you two. What are you going to do with us, Bracker? We'll see in a moment. Oh, Commander Corey. In there, both of you. Commander, they found out everything. The big room where Dr. Yeager hid all his horrible weapons. That's right, Corey. Yeager left full instructions. Now, you three stay in here a few moments. Then we shall see how the lethal ray works. You aren't going to use it on us. Exactly. There's a small hand model that should serve the purpose quite nicely. I'll be right back. Gotta to try to find a way out of here before they get back with that lethal ray. We've got to stop them, Commander. With those weapons, they can wipe out whole cities. And it's all my fault. No, that's not going to help. Oh, but look. Look what was in the room with the weapons. The paper that Dr. Yeager left. Well, let me see it. I had hoped that this message would never be read. The fact that you are reading these words is proof that human beings cannot be trusted. Therefore, you deserve to be destroyed. Knowing there was evil and destruction concealed here, you came willingly. Very well, use these forces that I have discovered. Destroy yourselves and improve the universe. Dr. Wilhelm Jaeger. Wow. A very bitter man. He was right. Human beings can't be trusted. I prove that. Everybody makes mistakes. And Dr. Jaeger made one when he assumed everyone was evil. And Bracker made a mistake when he thought there was no other way out of this room. Look behind this tapestry. A door. See if it's locked. It opens into a long hall. Come on, quickly, before Bracker comes back. Hurry, Lorna. Oh, if only we can find our way out of the castle. Well, anyway, there's plenty of light. Once we get out of here and get to the ship, we can call a space patrol squadron and destroy the castle if we have to. But if Dr. Yeager's weapons are as powerful as he said they are, couldn't Bracker and yours fight off all the spaceships in the universe? Well, they might get some of us, but we can keep them holed up here at least. Smoke and rockets as sure as a long corridor. Break it, Lorna. Oh, what did I hit? There's a big mirror across the corner of the passage. The passage turns here. Sure enough. And the mirror's at an angle so you can see around the corner. It looked like the passage went straight ahead. Up we are! It's Bracker. He's after us. Around the corner, quickly. Stop! Commander, what are we going to do? This is the end of the passage. There must be a door here. Yes, there is. <laughs> oh, it's locked. We're trapped. And Bracker's coming for us. Yeah, I can see him in the mirror coming up the corridor. And he's got a weapon. Come on, Yost. We got him now. They can't get out. Use the lethal ray. I want to get a little closer. Hey, Commander, uh, does he think that lethal ray shoots around corners? He doesn't know he's aiming at a mirror. He thinks the corridor is straight. Yeah, but, sir, what if the mirror reflects the ray toward us? Go on, Bracker. What are you waiting for? I'm waiting for him to plead for mercy. Well, Corey, haven't you anything to say? Don't talk. Keep perfectly quiet. All right, then. We'll see how Jaeger's lethal ray works. <laughs> Destroyed them completely. Yeah. Very satisfactory. But I had the regulator set unnecessarily high. Look what the ray did to the wall. Blasted a hole in it. Yeah, they're coming closer to examine it. We'll jump them when they reach the turn in the passage. Yes, sir. Lorna, keep absolutely quiet. Incredible, isn't it, Joe? You'd never know that a few seconds ago three human beings were standing here. Now, Hap, Bracker, look out! Take that weapon, Bracker. 
All right, Bracker, get up. Corey, I saw you disintegrate. Yeah, the three of you. I saw it, too. You can't always believe what you see. You were looking at a reflection. The lethal ray merely destroyed a mirror on the wall behind it. A mirror? That's right. It's the first and last bit of damage Dr. Yeager's lethal ray or his other weapons are going to inflict. Come on, Hap. Let's get these crooks up to the ship. Yes, sir. An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Hey, Hap, where are you hiding your rice checks and wheat checks these days? Right here, Captain Twofeld, in this top-secret Space Patrol file cabinet. Hey, you got to be careful where you keep the checks around here. They taste so good, anybody who sees them, eats them. <laughs> are you filing them under C for checks? Smoking rockets, no. Under T for tops. Oh, one thing for sure, Captain. It's no secret that rice checks and wheat checks are tops. Three ways. For taste, for size, and for get up and go. Yes, sir, gang. Hap is three times right. Checks are tops three ways. For taste, sunny gold rice checks or power-rich wheat checks. Delicious right out of the box for snacks or out of the bowl with milk or cream. Tops for size. Checks are made in that modern, streamlined, bite-sized design for super easy eating. And checks are tops for get up and go. Real space patrol get up and go. After a good breakfast with checks, you're off to a blazing lightning fast start every morning. Jump in Jupiter, Captain Tufel. What are we waiting for? Hey, let's get going on the checks right now. Space patrollers, why don't you get going? Go get checks today. Look for them in the red and white checkerboard packages with the swell picture of Commander Corey or Cadet Happy on the outside and the wonderful free Space Patrol trading card on the inside. Rice checks. Wheat checks. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are captives aboard a spaceship from another galaxy. In a desperate attempt to warn the United Planets of an attack, the two space patrollers are trying to master the bewildering controls of a spaceophone in the strange ship. Well, gee, Commander, this certainly doesn't look like any transmitter I ever saw before. Hold it, Hap. I think you've got it. Don't touch anything else. Make the call. <laughs> Smoking rockets. Commander, look! It's the robot. Zervok sent him to stop us. He's a monster. And he's coming right for us. Get that call out, Half. I'll try to hold that thing off. Space Patrol! Emergency! All units! It's got me! Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, The Visitor from Galaxy 9, when Rice Checks and Wheat Checks again present Space Patrol! <laughs> Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey, and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Deverick. Other players were Virginia Hewitt, Norman Jolly, and Ken Mayer. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Rice Checks and Wheat Checks again present Space Patrol! <laughs> Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.